Hi, my name is Whitney and we are at the Alberta College of Art and Design. I wanted to uh, talk about materials today. Uh, just, just like a musician tunes their instrument, I think uh, as an artist, preparing our material is an important part of uh, getting ready to get to work. And for me, as an artist who went through a classical training at the Academy of Classical Design, I prepare my tools so that I can uh, draw uh, with subtlety and precision. Um, so when I work with charcoal, my charcoal is sharpened um, quite significantly. And in order to get a point like this on your charcoal, um, you have to use a sandpaper block. If you have a piece of sandpaper, you can just tape it around a piece of uh, a one by two, and it works just as well as a fancy sandpaper uh, paddle. Um, so in order to get a nice point on your charcoal, it's a um, kind of slow process. Um, and I like to say fast is slow and slow is fast. If you go too fast, you'll um, oftentimes break your charcoal. Uh, so you don't want to go so fast, you have to start all over again. So if you start very slowly, and as you sharpen, you'll rotate the charcoal uh, back and forth so as to evenly sharpen it down to a point. You'll also notice that I'm holding the charcoal at a very shallow angle in relation to the sandpaper. It's not um, tilted up uh, at a sharp angle. And as it gets closer to being a sharp point, you'll want to go just a little slower. You'll wipe off any excess uh, charcoal dust, and then you have a nice sharp point to draw with. And one of the benefits of having a longer and sharper point is that um, you'll have to sharpen your charcoal less frequently. And more time drawing is always a wonderful benefit. And as you work, your charcoal will get shorter and shorter. So I always recommend investing in some uh, charcoal holders. Um, and this allows you to be able to work with a small piece like this, but still get a nice um, big uh, lines in the work. Um, I also work uh, with a long point on my uh, graphite pencils as well. I think you tend to work in a bigger motion, drawing more with your arm. Um, if you have a longer uh, drawing surface than if you're working with just a small, traditionally sharpened uh, pencil. So to get a nice long uh, point on your um, traditional drawing pencil, I like to start with uh, a matte knife. So this is, uh, they're very sharp, so you'll want to be, again, you'll want to go slow. And I like to carve away at least uh, two inches of wood from my pencil. And I'll start back here, and again, I'm going to go very shallowly, and I'm not I'm going to try to carve away all of it at once. It's going to be a little at a time, and I'm going to rotate around the pencil as I'm carving. And I'm going to make sure that I'm carving away from myself and not towards myself. I'm not going to apply too much pressure. And the pressure I'm applying, it's, it's going um, parallel to the lead of the pencil. 
so that I'm, I don't snap it accidentally. And once you start seeing your lead, you'll want to go just a little slower. So now that I've cleared the wood away from the graphite itself, it's helpful to carve away some of the graphite with your mat knife before uh, using the sandpaper. And the way that I like to do that is I'll hold my pencil perpendicular to the table and I'll take my mat knife and slowly carve away some of that graphite. And as I do that, I rotate my pencil so I'm not taking the graphite off of just one area or one side. And once I have it a little uh, tapered. I can then come over to my sandpaper and with very little pressure, almost no pressure at all, I'm going to do the same uh, thing I did with my charcoal. I'll hold it at a very low angle and slowly rotate my pencil as I um, rub it against the sandpaper. I'll wipe off any excess graphite dust. And now I have a nice sharp point on my pencil. And, um, and the points tend to last for a much longer time, the longer they are. I also work with a clutch pencil. And this is very helpful um, in perspective drawing to be able to create a consistent point and, and to do so fairly quickly. And the best way to sharpen the clutch pencil is to use a uh, drum a sharpener. And, um, and what's important to keep in mind is that on the top of your drum sharpener, there are guides for uh, sharpening your pencil. So you'll put your pencil lead in your guide and you'll make sure it's on the bottom of that guide and then you'll um, bring your clutch to the very top of that guide uh, mark. You'll then put your clutch pencil in the sharpener and hold it very closely to the sharpener and uh, rotate it around the drum. If you're sharpening your lead for the first time, it may take a, a couple passes through the guide to get a nice point. And once you stop hearing that grating of the lead in the sharpener, you know that it's completely sharp and you'll get a nice point on your clutch pencil. I typically um, have my lead a little further out of the pencil than when I'm sharpening 
Um, and then as you're working with your perspective drawing, a nice tip when pulling your clutch pencil is to also rotate your pencil as you pull your line because your line will get thicker if you don't rotate as you pull. Again, as you work um, with a traditional pencil, you'll slowly get less and less uh, room to hold it. And I recommend getting the most out of your materials. So investing in some of these pencil holders will allow you to use your, the entirety of your graphite. I also use this with my pastel pencils or charcoal pencils if I want. Um, uh, it's helpful for me just to have more space to make marks with. So that's some information on preparing your material, but now that um, you're ready to start drawing, I also wanted to discuss just a few drawing aids. So uh, the eraser is an important one, and I always like to have a kneaded eraser on hand. It's a very versatile eraser. You can shape it to the space that you want to erase. So if you need to erase a big flat area, you can shape it into a big flat eraser. If you need to pull out only a very small amount or a subtle detail, you can pull your eraser out to a very uh, fine point and just erase that tiny information that you want to remove off of your drawing. I like to work, especially with charcoal, I like to work with uh, some soft brushes. That allows me to brush away the excess uh, charcoal powder and um, I can lose some of my information and before uh, bringing it back in with more specificity later on. Um, another tool I like to use as I'm working uh, is a small mirror. As you work and, and draw, we tend to become, I think, hypnotized by, by our drawing. We, and we see, we know there's something that's, um, that we want to correct or that's not feeling right. And we don't quite know how to pinpoint what's happening. Uh, a mirror is a helpful tool to discover um, where that uh, discrepancy might be in your drawing. And what it allows you to do is it gives you a fresh perspective. Um, so to hold a mirror uh, either above your eyes, and you can look at both the object you're drawing and your drawing itself, and then you have, um, you're flipping the image, and it gives you a fresh view. So you're looking at your shapes differently. It gives you a, a distance to it because it's reversed, and you're not looking at it um, in the same way as you would if you were looking at it uh, right side up. Um, another tool I use when I'm trying to pinpoint my values is a value isolator. I like to be able to view my piece and the object I'm working from at the same time and I can compare my values. Um, when we're working with charcoal or graphite or uh, pastel for your lights, um, it's important to remember that we'll never be able to get our drawing as dark or as light as an object that we're viewing in reality. The limits of our material um, are, are not the same as what our eyes can view or what light is capable of producing. But we can uh, approximate it and we can uh, do that by some artistic tricks, but also um, by accurately trying to achieve the same relationship of values. This value isolator allows, um, allows me to do just that. So if I hold it out and I hold part of it over my uh, drawing or painting and part of it over what I'm drawing or painting, I can um, isolate just those values and compare them by looking, I'll focus my view um, in between the two and then try and compare them to each other objectively without any other visual information interfering with my um, perception. 
I also work with a mall stick, especially towards the end when I'm trying to get uh, more precise. And um, what that allows me to do is I can rest um, the end of my mall stick on the piece itself. If, I'm, if it's on a painting, make sure it's on a dry area. Uh, if it's on a drawing, make sure it's on an area um, that you can't smudge or uh, injure in some way. Um, so you'll rest your, uh, the side of your mall stick that has either rubber, or in this case, uh, I just bought a dowel from uh, Home Depot uh, or Lowe's and then added a little piece of suede from an old um, jacket and tied it around the end. Um, and, I, and I'll rest my hand as I'm working. It gives it a stability and um, it prevents any kind of uh, movement in my arm if I'm straining to hold it up. Um, and I can really get in and make some precise decisions uh, on my work. Um, I think these are all really Im important tools to have in your drawing kit as they will give you that control you're looking for over your material as well preparing them um, in a way that, that allows you to pursue that precision and subtlety in your work that you might be striving for.